Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Cloudy God's Nugget for the day. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I trust the Lord that you're doing well. Hallelujah. We serve an amazing Father. He's been so good to us. Hallelujah. We're here to just share on uh, God's Word what He has laid in my heart. I'll be excited to share that with you. Praise the name of the Lord. But before we get into it, we're going to take a few minutes just to honor God, a minute or two thereabout. God bless you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Jesus, we're here to honor you, to reverence you, to adore you, to say again that you are God and you are God of all the earth. We love you so much, Jesus. We praise you. We bless you. We thank you for yet another day. We thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your favor, your mercies, your grace, your compassion. Thank you for your blood that was shed for us on the cross. Thank you for this life we have in you. Lord, we thank you for your goodness in our lives, oh God. We love you, Jesus. We praise you. There is no God like you. In all the earth, you are the great and mighty God. You rule and reign in the majesty of your power. Let your name alone be exalted. Let your name alone be lifted up. Let your name alone be magnified who is like you lord who can be compared to you be exalted jesus be exalted we're here to bow down and then say that you alone are god be magnified be magnified be magnified you are in control we trust in you oh jesus we rest in you our confidence is in you our security is in you our future is in you our hope is in you our everything is in you everything that's beautiful comes from you we rest in you jesus we love you so much in your precious holy name we worship amen praise the name of the lord lord i just pray as we're about to get into your word oh god i just pray that your very words come through me in the name of jesus i pray that you bless the hero oh god Bless the hear, oh God. Let your word settle in their spirit, oh God. Transform their lives. Make them, oh God, into your very image, oh God. Perfect their lives. Touch any part of their lives, oh God, that needs a touch from you, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Glorify your name in this. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Today, I'm going to be sharing with us on his thoughts are not our thoughts. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, today's text is taken from Isaiah 55, 8 through 13. Bless the name of the Lord. I'm going to read starting from verse 8. So he says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and your ways are not my ways. This is the Lord's declaration. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and your ways are not my The Lord is saying, he was, he was saying to the children of Israel, He's saying to us today, I don't think as you think. My ways are different from our ways. You know, um, this could mean several different things to us. But my spirit was asking the Lord, Lord, what are you saying here? What are you saying? And the Lord can be saying so many because he's God. He can be saying so much in one sentence, one, even in one word. But this is what the Lord has pointed out to me. Our, our ways as humans, our ways are, are limited. To be honest, we think mostly in the flesh. We think mostly in the flesh. And we, we are restricted by what we see, we feel, you know, those are, th those are the things that we think are, we're, we're restricted, right? But God's, th God's, thoughts, God's thoughts are, uh, I, I don't even think that we have enough words to express who God is. I, I can't sit here and say, I, you know, I know the totality of God and his um, how great he is, how grandeur he is. I, ca I can't say, sit here and say that. Praise the name of the Lord. So one thing I want us to point out is his th thoughts towards us, his thoughts are pure. They're perfect. They're excellent. His thoughts are pure. They're perfect and excellent. He's a, he's a holy God. So think about the kind of thoughts God would think in general. I'm not even just saying towards us, just in general. Pure, perfect, excellent. I, I believe that if, if there were words to even go beyond that, to, to, to describe his essence, right? We would. Secondly, 
God thinks grandeur, like I said, his thoughts are great. And, and I'm going to lean more on this because I think this is where we struggle. And this is the message he wants me, he wants us to have. God's, God's thoughts are not restricted. They are not limited. God, number three, God thinks possible. That's where he's going with this. And I'm, I'm going to read further down that scripture and that's going to shed more light. He thinks possible. We think, oh, we can only go so much. Or if the doctors say, this is it and that's it. Oh, they've done, the doctors have done everything they can do. Oh, we say, oh, somebody they let you go at work or they fired you at work. That's it. Right? We, we, we only think so far, oh, your, our thoughts say, um, oh, I'm already 50. How can I get married? Or I'm already 50. How can I have a baby? Or I'm 80. Right? <laughs> God's thoughts are not our thoughts. So number one, his thoughts are pure. They are excellent. They're perfect. Number two, he thinks great beyond any kind of imagination on this planet. And he thinks possible. Wherever we, we feel restricted, wherever we say, oh, there's no hope, there's no way. God, God goes farther and beyond, beyond, beyond. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to read some scripture. I'm going to read some more scriptures here. Verse 9, right after he tells us that his thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways are not our ways. He says, for as heaven is higher than earth, so my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now, it, it looks like he's just saying, maybe he's just saying, maybe this is just like a, a figure of speech. But let, if you begin to use your imagination, let's try and imagine that. As far as the heaven is from the earth, that's how far his thoughts are, right? And his ways are from ours. Think about that for a second if you can. Verse 10, he says, For just as rain and snow fall from heaven and do not return there without saturating the earth and making it germinate and sprout and providing seed to sow and food to eat so my word that comes from my mouth will not return to me empty but it will accomplish what i please and will prosper in what in prosper in what i send it to do so that's why it brought me brings me to the the point the third point i talked about he thinks possible he thinks great god gave the scripture because he was trying to challenge them on something that he would do regardless if he has said it, he will do it. And I want, this is a word for somebody. Remember that in your affliction, in your need, in your desperation, in crying out to God, in a situation that looks impossible for you. God says that his thoughts are not your thoughts. Don't limit him. And that's what we do. We try to bring God to where we are and we stop there. We bring, we, when, we, when we think of a problem, we think, oh, if I can't solve it, then God can't solve it. That's, that's really, be honest. In many situations, that's situations, and that's why we don't have faith. We, we're forced, because we're very consumed by what we see and our, our, our experiences, and we're so accustomed to walking by flesh, we can't see past, it's, it's a challenge for many of us to see past how we see a circumstance. If, for example, your landlord says, I give you till tomorrow, or let's say, I give, I give you till tomorrow to pay a, a rent, but then, and then if not, I'm going to evacuate you. I'm going to evict you, right? Right? And then, and then you know, okay, you've been out of work for two months now, and he's going to evict you tomorrow. What's so real is that eviction and the man's threat? You, you, and maybe you've, you've reached out to your relatives, you know, they all have their own lamentations. Everybody's complaining. They don't have anything. So in your mind, you, you, all you can think of is how this man is likely going to evict me because I don't have this money. My bank account says 10 cents. I don't have this money. And sometimes we, it's very, very hard, especially when there's pressure for us to think past that. That is a time where you bring in the scripture. And I've brought in the scripture in times like that in my life where it looks just way out there. It just seems hopeless. There's just no way. That's what your flesh is telling you. The circumstances tell you. The enemy amplifies that. In fact, he really wants to tell you and say, look, you say you have a God. You say you trust God. See your circumstance. See, see. Tell me how you're going to get out of this one. That's what the enemy says to us. And that's a time to remember his thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways are not our ways. Not only did he stop there, he talks about, he says something that is really loving. He says, he says, so my word that comes from my mouth will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I please and it will prosper in what I send it. I send out my word. It's going to accomplish what I say. It's going to do it. My word is going to, it's going to be a fruit. How loving that those words are. God is giving us an assurance. 
he he's making us look at things from the right perspective because sometimes we're really consumed with our perspective so not only that he's giving us an assurance giving us a confidence hope in me just believe my word your ways are not your ways. You're, you're restricted in the way you perceive the situation. The way you look at this situation, you can't see past that. But I, got, I have the future. I've got the future. I've got you. I have ways that you don't know about. I have hidden treasures. I have breakthroughs. I have open doors. I'm a God of impossibility. I'm a God that's great. I, I have, I, 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 this universe is mine. I created the, whole, the entire universe. The cattle on a thousand hills are mine. So what am I challenging us? We're not going to sit down in our problems and wallow in our problems and limit and think that we're thinking of. We have a God. We, sometimes we say we serve the mighty God, the great God, but we really have a God of our minds. We, we, we mold God into the limits of our mind. Remember, God says, you, your ways are different from mine. I am God, not you're not. You are human. I'm God. Those who trust in him will never be put to shame. That's what the word of God says. Do you know that those desperate times are the times where you should say, God, I hold on to your word. Look at what you have said. You said your word will never go back to your void. You said, if I, if I hold on to this word, if I trust in you, if I do not lean on my understanding, if I trust in you, if I depend on you, if I cast my cares on you, if I rest in you, I will see what you have said come to pass. He says it here. He says his word will bear fruit. It will bring about a harvest. It will accomplish what he has sent it to do. Praise the name of the Lord. <clears throat> Verse 12 further says, you will indeed go out with joy and be peacefully guided. Verse 12 is even just telling us of the, of the after effect. In fact, you're going to be so blessed, you're going to go out with joy. How about reassuring yourself about that in adverse situations, in impossible situations? And he said, Lord, this is what you have said. Not only have you said your word must bear fruit, you're also saying that I will have joy and I will have peace. We, we all know that when we're in adversity, it's, it's having, keeping your peace is a struggle. It's a struggle. The, the situation is speaking to you. The enemy is speaking to you. You might even have peer pressure around. You might have family members, you know, lamenting, blowing that situation out of proportion. You might have, a, you might have people around you that are trying to stir up fear in you and more anxiety than you already have to deal with. Right? But it says, you, you already, God ahead of time reassures you that you're going to have peace and you're going to have joy. So it means that you have, for, you to, for him to say that, it means he sees the outcome. That's the thoughts we're talking about. We see a problem, God sees the outcome, it's done. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. Sometimes people think this is, oh, you're just, uh, this is a, um, this is just a, 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 a speech to encourage, you know, for like a cheering speech. You're just trying to cheer us up. I'm not just sharing the chair of the, the word of God has power. You're never going to know if you don't challenge yourself, if you don't believe on it. One of the problems God has with us is that believing on him, that's what matters. It's not what he has said. The challenge we have is believing on him because again, because we're restricted in our thinking. We think carnal, we think natural, we think limited. We think based on our circumstance, what our situation, what our senses tell us. We think many times really what the enemy tells us. Those are the things we think about. Anytime you're sitting down there wallowing in self-pity and in fear and anxiety, you've just listened to the wrong voice. You're not listening to the voice of the word of God because the Lord, word of God will never speak defeat to you. So if we ever cut ourselves brooding and, and low in spirit and depressed and confused and all these negative feelings and worried and anxious, we're thinking about the wrong things. We're not thinking God's thoughts. Those are low thoughts. Those are low thoughts. So let us remember, let's always remember to come back to the scripture. My thoughts for you are good thoughts. If I've spoken a word, if I've given you a revelation word, if I've given you a word, I've told you this is what I'm going to do, you have to believe on me. Oftentimes, we're, 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 we put God in a box and we think God is going to come through at a t our, our own time. I say if you trust God, you trust God, you... you, you um, you lay your consent, your burdens at his feet and you rest. The Holy Spirit, if you really want to rest, the Holy Spirit is going to give you the grace. Say, Lord, I know this is what I'm seeing, but I trust you. I trust in you. I'm going to worship you through this adversity, through these trying times. I know you've got me. And I'm telling you, at the, sometimes, yes, the Lord might not come um, as promptly as we want him. But at the nick of time, the Lord would, would, would show up for you. He would deliver you. He would make a way. He will turn that situation around. Something that looks so fearful, that looks like he has, um, there's consequences, there's going to be penalty, there's going to be this, there's going to be the enemy, there's all sorts of threats. The Lord would, would just quiet in that situation. 
or he will avert it or he will bring about a breakthrough. He has his ways of doing it. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. I'm going to read um, further. So I'm reading verse 12, the B part of it. It says, you will break into singing before you and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Praise the name of the Lord. He said, instead of the thorn bush, a cypress will come up. And instead of the briar, a myrtle will come up. And this will stand as a monument for the Lord, an everlasting sign that will not be destroyed. Instead of the hardship, the lack, you're going to see God's glory. That's what it's saying. Thorn bush versus cypress. Instead of hardship, you're going to see prosperity. You're going to see blessing. Instead of curse, you're going to see blessing. I want to, just one final thought. I want to challenge us on believing in God. Don't bring God to where you are. Come up to where he is. And I believe that he's telling us the scriptures. He's saying, come up higher. Come up higher. Come up in your thinking. How do we come up in our thinking? We're going to come up in our thinking by meditating on the word of God and believing on it. We're going to believe on the word of God with all of our hearts. We're not going to bring God down to a place of fear and worry and all these things I talked about. We're going to think according to his word. His word. And we're going to wait expectantly. And we're going to wait with a good attitude. We're going to give way to that with a heart of thanksgiving and faith. Praise the name of the Lord. In summary, it says, so in summary, that, in summary, what I want us to take out of this, the Lord can do and will do anything for us. If he has given you a promise, hold on to it. Don't be discouraged by what you see or the time is elapsing. That's your calendar. That's your thinking. Remember that? Trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. His, his thoughts for us are good thoughts. They bless us and they give us an expected end. God's thoughts give us an expected end. And we just saw it in verses 12 and 13. His thoughts, he talked about it. He says, when you hold on to his thoughts and you trust in him, he says, you will have joy, you will have peace. For you to have joy and peace, he says, because I will grant you, my word will accomplish what I sent it for. And he says, you will have prosperity. I want to leave us with that today. I pray that the Lord will, that this word will continue to resonate in your spirit. Maybe even more fruit. Maybe the Lord give you even more insight. And may this word give you peace and calmness. And may the Lord grant you your heart's desire in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm just going to pray for us real quick. Lord, I just thank you for my brother and sister sitting on the other end. I thank you, Lord, that you're perfecting everything that concerns them. I thank you, Lord, that you've shown us today, Lord, that we, we shouldn't line up. We shouldn't... Um, we shouldn't we shouldn't have you in our imagination and risk and how and limit you to the way we think you're calling us to come up higher to think according to your thoughts and we get your thoughts from your word i pray that this scripture ministers to us i pray that our hearts will be open to you that anywhere we've had um doubts and fears and worries oh god we just repent flood us with your love flood us with your peace flood us with our hearts with faith ground us in your word Help us not to stagger at your word of God. Help us to position ourselves to receive of all of this goodness which you've promised. The blessings and the peace and the joy. Lord, we thank you that you love us. That you share this kind of word just to encourage us. We give you all the glory. We surrender again over and over. We surrender to your lordship. We surrender to the, your will and your purposes. Lord, be magnified in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. God bless you. I want to thank you for joining with me on Cloudy God's Nugget for today. May the Lord bless you and keep you and prosper you. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Amen.